Olympic final to win it. For me, starts from starts from the back, goes all the way up the pitch. Uh, there's a goal actually against Holland at Lee Valley. It's pretty much exactly that out the back. So, to Holly Webb. Players getting three from the midfield. Now here's an opportunity for Watton. Watton. And then a, a backhand cross for me and a deflection. Lovely little ball to Townsend and Bray's there in the middle. Bray to all. Sophie Bray levels it up team goal and it's, and it's everyone playing their part whether it's a player running off the ball whether it's a player scoring it doesn't really matter it's, it's everyone being involved uh, for me I quite like kind of like one twos around the pitch so it's kind of more of a team goal so uh, I'm trying to think of a good example but when you're, when you're playing one twos all the way up the pitch and you just kind of you're, you're playing so quick for the opposition that they can't even get near you and you've played four, five, six passes you're into the D um, yeah, hit back post and deflection in or something like that. Just something that just looks really slick. If it's one centimetre over the line or from top here, I wouldn't care. Goal's a goal, that's what I would do. Simple, dream come true. Absolutely none. So I'm a big believer in not having any, so doesn't matter if my stick breaks, my shin pads break, my shoes break, I can just put on another pair, I can wear a different glove, I can play with a different stick if I have to. No, the only ritual, well it's not even a ritual, but I never turn up with my kit on, because uh, I, I like to get changed and ready in the change room before, whereas quite a lot of girls get ready beforehand, do their makeup and everything. But now I just turn up without my kit, which is actually quite a high risk strategy. Touch road, it hasn't actually backfired yet. Yeah, I know a couple of the guys, um, I have quite a few and I just, yeah, I try and stay very, very clear of them. Um, yeah, just if anything gets gets thrown thrown my direction and something happens, I can just kind of get on with it and just still play how I, how I know I can play. So. Well, I had a ripple the other day and I hadn't had one of them in years. It was, that's definitely up there actually, underrated chocolate bar. Um, I do like a dairy milk caramel. Um, also had a Snickers or they hadn't had that in a while. That was also very tasty from from <laughs> not for the lemonade. It's just there's a fact I've got I've got it I've got it peanut M and M's. As a chocolate bar though. Uh, it's, it's kind of it's chocolate. It's not in a bar. In fact, you can get it in a bar. You can. So it's technically a bar as well. It's been lockdown was sort of a bit of a saving grace for me in a way. Um, I could reassess my body, I could also sort of look at how I wanted to be this year and, and I haven't been too happy with how I've been in terms of hockey for the last sort of three, four years. Uh, the last sort of ten months, funnily enough, I feel like I've been back to getting to where I should have been and so for me it's been probably a little bit different to how most people have felt. I felt like it's given me a big opportunity to, to come back as a, as a better player and and I won't lie to anyone, there were, there were moments in the last three years where I thought, Do you know what, I may not be able to get there. But actually from lockdown and, and being back here with the girls, it's, it's shown me how much I love it and, and how good we could be as well. And I think we needed to feel that as a team. Probably just getting, getting back into kind of the elite level training, um, how fast it is. We were kind of we built our way back up. So the first couple of weeks, two training sessions, built up three, four, five, six. But just having such a long time away from the hockey pitch and trying to get back into it, it was just a lot of guys quite rusty, but obviously fitness levels aren't match, uh, at, mid, at match fitness. Um, so it was just it's just a strange couple of weeks really. Um, hockey wasn't the best, but it was just really nice to be back. Uh, I'd say, as you know, we were literally gearing towards the Olympics. So for me, it was kind of that dream come true. It was within touching distance and training was at the maximum. Felt like I was playing pretty well, sort of grooving myself and definitely trying to carve out a position for myself in the squad. And then for that just to be gone and a bit of uncertainty as to whether or not it will happen, whether it get postponed, um, that was the hardest thing for me, for it just to be so close and then actually it's now another year away. So I have an all-round all play, obviously, Everyone thinks scoring goals, but you've got to be able to link up, defend as well, and 
as something that they look at a lot in the team. It's not just about scoring goals. We've got a few of us that can do that. It's just more like all round play, but being able to keep calm in the critical time around the day because a lot of times we get in there and you rush the shot or anything like that. But it's just been being calm in the moments and being ready to play. Well, the classic would be he's a goalie, so it's smelly, isn't it? But we actually have a bit of a room off the back of the house, so his goalie kit goes there. Um, surprisingly, it's actually quite chilled and quite calm. He has this big impression on the pitch and out and about with friends, but when he gets home, he's a bit more quiet and tired, so it's quite, it's good. There's a few ways, really. We've got a psychologist with us, so we have, we have some kind of pre-game routines or after-game routines that we can go through so it's kind of um, you look at the mistakes you made you look at the video you look at the videos of you doing it well so you kind of prime kind of the, the, the good stuff you've done in the past and the good stuff you've done recently so um, there's a few ways of going about it but generally we, we kind of try and you think about it for a little bit, you watch the clips and then you move on and you concentrate on your, your usual kind of pre-game stuff with the team and your psychological stuff and you're priming to play well for the next match so um, yeah it's kind of that stuff. So there's a couple, so for me I didn't get selected for London which was a big setback in my career but sort of to, to counteract that a little bit it's probably the best thing that ever happened to me and without it I don't think I'd be the player that I am today um, but for me it took me it took me a lot to sort of look at myself and think okay what am I doing wrong how do I need to be on the pitch how do I need, how do I need to be off the pitch and to open myself up a little bit and be vulnerable instead of this this cocky youngster coming through I sort of listened to my peers and my coaches and and then I learned from it and then another Part of being an elite athlete or her any athlete is that you, you get injuries and and I had no injuries up until the age of 27 and, and since then which is what sort of four years ago I'm now 31 so I'm giving away my age but I've had a few more injuries and and each one gets a little bit tougher um, if you haven't rehabbed you don't know how hard it is really and, and then once you've rehabbed once it's in the back of your mind and, and this stuff playing hockey as, as hard as it is it's, it's easy because it's a game that you love when you're doing the running by yourself when you're in the gym by yourself, it's, it's a different battle, but in a, in a very strange way, I feel like everyone should sort of go through it because it gives you that, that individual resilience that you potentially wouldn't get if you weren't injured. So it's, it's a bit of a tough one, but like with anything in life, if you want it enough, you, you find a way to get there.